y'all it's betsy from happily ever after etc and i am back with another gardening project so y'all might have caught on by now because i release them almost every week that on tuesdays i do my fertilizing and since my garden is rather small i also do my deadheading and weeding and kind of my maintenance things each week i try to do them each week so that things don't get too convoluted <laughs> with missing a bunch of things so i've already shown you how i fertilize my roses and my perennials i do those on kind of the a weeks on the b weeks i fertilize my annuals now if i had more time patience and arms i might fertilize my annuals every week but so far that's just a little too much for me and since i do fertilize by using my fish tank water um, almost every week on my annuals. I don't need to do that this type of fertilizing as often. So basically today I'm going to bring you on the garden with me just like always. We're going to fertilize all the annuals and do a little bit of garden maintenance but I thought first I'd sit down and I'd go over what I'm using because there are so many different options. So typically I use my Miracle Grow liquid feed as my all-purpose fertilizer. So I use this for almost all of my annuals, things like my Super Tunia, Vista Bubblegum, my Verbena, my Coneflowers, my Cosmos, my Zinnias, my Burgonias, and my Marigolds. I keep a list, I write it down before I start, that way I know, like last week I did my Salvia and my Snapdragons, I'll hit those again next week, but this week these are the things I really need to focus on. So anything annual or anything like your Salvia that flowers really heavily also needs to be fed heavily because it's it's performing. So when you come to picking a fertilizer, they are not all created equal. I picked this one up last year because it is the only one my local nursery and garden center carry. I'd really like to try the Proven Winners water soluble fertilizer, but it's just not available in my area and I didn't want to wait until it was available. So. I bought a four pack of this and I'm going to use it all up and then I'm going to order that proven winners. So the way you can tell what a fertilizer does is it will have these three numbers on it. So this one bloom trigger is a 0, 10, 11. And I bought this one specifically for my dahlias because this first number is nitrogen. So it's nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and nitrogen. That first number, is what targets your leaf growth. So it's going to make your plants grow really big leaves to really get that sun um, really good. The second one, that phosphorus, that is what tells your plant to grow really strong roots. And the third one, the potassium, is kind of an all over, um, let's make this plant as good as possible. It also helps target those blooms just a little bit. So this is one I just picked up. I, it's not even open. I haven't tried it yet, but it was recommended for dahlias. I've been using this on my dahlias, but anything with a lot of nitrogen in that first number is not great for dahlias. And my dahlia has not been blooming. Um, it's been doing really great with that leaf growth. Thanks nitrogen, but I want blooms. So we are going to try switching to this and seeing if the, um, the dahlias will start blooming for us. But this one, the Miracle Grow, the liquid feed, I wrote down my notes for what I can't remember because this one doesn't say it right on it like the other one. It is a 1248. So it is an all around, it's going to target, you know, roots, leaves, and blooms, specifically heavy on more of the blooms for those annuals. But the Proven Winners water, water soluble is a 241217 which means it really helps, especially things like those vistas, the Super Tunia Vista bubblegum. They get so big and beautiful. They really need to eat like a freaking linebacker on the football team, okay? Feed them, feed them good. So we're gonna use this up and then eventually we will get the other one. But for today, I'm just gonna show you with what I have. So since these are water soluble fertilizers, as opposed to the rose tone that I showed you in my rose pruning, and fertilizing video, my perennial video, um, I can't just go scratch them around the plant and then water them in. Instead, you're going to put your fertilizer directly in your watering can. 
or you can often get attachments that let you connect this directly to your hose. But my hose attachment broke. So this little guy comes with a handy scoop. You can see it shows a one and a two. That is for gallons. This is a two and a half gallon watering jug, which is why I use it for this. And it, it lets me fertilize quite a bit at once. So you're literally just gonna squeeze that fertilizer out, keeping the cup as level as possible until you hit that two mark. Now you're gonna dump it right in here. And now I will go fill my watering can up and I will start watering my bubble gum, my cosmos, my coneflowers, anything that flowers as an annual or a perennial. Um, and then I will do my dahlia at the end. Let's go ahead and get started because we've got a lot of things to fertilize. But in order to get the water for this, I'm gonna have to turn off my uh, sprinklers. I've got it watering my seed. If you, you caught my growing grass seed video, I'm trying to get that seed to germinate. <laughs> Let's go. All right. back a little bit because they are still hitting this front edge and that overhead hard water is not so good for my plants but I'm gonna head and fill this baby up and we're just gonna come through I'm gonna hit this verbena he needs a little fertilizer the lobelia does didn't even have him on my list Marigolds definitely do. I already got the snapdragons last week, but it's always good just to hit them a little bit. Like I said, these things would be good with weekly fertilizing. This lobelia, get those cone flowers. They're starting to really go blooms must be liking their fertilizer and come in with the bubble gum and so I try not to get the leaves as much as possible when it comes to watering these things overhead you try to get kind of that drip line or if it's something like these cone flowers where you can go in and really get the the crown or the roots of the plant that's great but if you can't like with this bubble gum you're just gonna do your best to come around and get that drip line of the ground around the plants so that it's soaking into the ground and fertilizing all the way around the plant get that pentas need it too we just planted them and they are struggling a bit And for some more.
mangoes are getting big enough we can probably transplant some soon. Since the window boxes are containers, the only fertilizer or soil or water or nutrients they get is from us. So we have to fertilize them. See there, little bee. Cosmos, and that's about it. That is as easy as it is. And I did go through quite a few buckets of water, but I don't know, I still find it easier than having to hook up different hoses to the fertilizer. Um, as my garden grows, that may change. All right, so y'all actually missed quite a bit of deadheading so my camera cut out, but our few cosmos in the deadhead over here. Sure, so the gala is a spring flower. You can see it is going out of bloom. This is the first year mine have bloomed. So I'm not 100% sure. Do I need to go in and like trim these spent bloom stalks off? Or do I just leave those alone for the rest of the season? Anybody who knows about gala, let me know. But while I'm over here, I did notice Um, kind of webs or cocoons or something on my palm flowers. And by I notice, I mean my mom noticed. And so she said to come out and spray them all with my neem oil. flowers over here are so much bigger than my ones on the other side. All right, so since we did just water over here, we'll probably come out again uh, tomorrow, maybe in a couple days, and uh, spray this again until we see all those cocoons gone. But my rose is blooming and this rose says it is not a climbing rose. It says it's a normal rose, but it puts off these long runners and my mom put hers near an obelisk and it is climbing that thing like crazy. So I might try to get an obelisk to go over here. Of course the helicopters are coming out, but in the meantime, the weight of this one is really weighing this branch down, so I'm just gonna put a support on it. So 
that better than nothing, especially since there are two or three other buds on that branch that once they bloom, will really want to fall over. So we have more blooms on some of these other branches. If I don't get an obelisk, they may need supports as well. But that is it for my garden maintenance today since you missed all the deadheading. But that's okay. The main goal of this video is to show you how I fertilize my annuals and we got that done. So hope you liked this video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, show your friends, tell your mom. I will be back with even more garden projects soon because tackling the porch next it is in need of some help. So bye y'all.